Hello, hello, buongiorno. Qui ci siamo a Cremona. We are here in Cremona in my workshop. And today we make here a nice live transmission regarding how to keep your instrument clean. And uh, I think you have a lot of things you can take care of while you maintain your instrument. Here you can see Marco is working. I have to keep a distance of at least two meters. And uh, he's very brave working all day with his mask, how it should be. And uh, he returned to work uh, the yesterday, the day before yesterday. Yeah, finally we could uh, have him back here. And also Michaela is cleaning and uh, very nice. We changed a few things here and it's all very nice here now. Min is right now connecting my computer here. So in order that I can see all your questions later on, okay? Um, I'm glad you don't know how things here happen. <laughs> And uh, because I do everything at the very last moment. And so maybe we can see even the turtle today here. I don't see the turtle, it's a pity. I wanted to show you one day the turtle in the garden, but which is out here in the window, you know. Okay. Here in the workshop, it's pretty cold, while outside, uh, temperature is getting warmer and warmer, and it's uh, a nice weather already. Yeah. We adjusted here the whole workshop a little bit and uh, took away a few of the, the, the mess and things like this. Here I want to show you where I'm going to transmit now this um, uh, transmission here. I, I, I prepared myself this time a little bit. Usually I'm not so well prepared. The yellow one here is for plastic to recycle. Sorry, I could have taken it away so you don't look only to this garbage can. I put it here a tripod so I can put the camera here later on in this jig here and then you can really watch while I'm doing here some things and in case this gets boring I put it also this tripod this very small one from Manfrotto which is from Anna thanks Anna and uh, then I can put it down here a little bit closer and you can see it even better from here okay this is the situation here in my shop. And uh, yeah, it's always a little bit messy here on my working bench, but this is how it looks like, okay? Now, over there in the musician room, I have a lot of, a lot of other videos, uh, um, the videos, um, instruments, sorry. Um, uh, and uh, I just, picked out two instruments which I thought could be interesting for you to see how I keep this, uh, sorry that my finger here is in front of the camera because I tried to put the camera now in this tripod and so we can talk like this, okay? Uh, this video, this is a little bit disturbing you. And maybe even at the back side, huh? it really is so light that maybe it's a bit of a takeaway of this here. Very well. So usually you don't see me too often with this um, nice here to work, but since today I want to polish a little bit, I, I put it on this protection for my shirt. And uh, I will show you how my shirts, if I don't put it this on, uh, end up, because then we use them here in the workshop as well for cotton rags to um, polish the instruments itself. Um, just need to put this computer here in front. Sorry, just, oh, this is great now, thank you. And we have here the cable. And then I have everything. You know, here everybody's a little bit involved in, in having Edgar being here online. I have to move here an instrument in order that we can have things here nicely 
on oh min even turned the comments nice big on you can hear it you can see it here on the computer very big written very nice uh, this is mean you know very good okay so let's come to the point we don't let's uh, we I'm wasting so much time already here talking too much five minutes past already and you want to know what's going on so Let's get to the point and how to keep your instrument perfect and clean. And uh, as a musician, I would say that the moment to sit down, not to play and just to double check the instrument is actually the right time to do. You don't have to do that every day. Uh, but once a while, I would say once every two weeks or every month would be a great uh, moment to do so because I, I have the impression that not everybody does that and it's a very important okay so here I'm again and uh, on 3G sorry and um, sorry I was on the Wi-Fi and it's better on 5G um, so, as I said, it's a very important, important moment with the excuse of cleaning your instrument. You take uh, five minutes, maybe even ten, but five minutes just to double check everything and to look if everything is fine, right? And at the moment you look at your instrument like this and you realize that it is, let's say, full with uh, uh, colophonium, you start taking it off, okay? Now, to take it off, you can do everything, but you have to a little bit to think that the colophonium, the rosin, is something a little bit hard. And by taking it off, just with a cotton rag, you would probably scratch a little bit if there is no, nothing liquid or which makes the cotton softer. So that's why I probably would suggest to take a a microfiber cloth okay I always like to sit down like this and put it on my lap okay uh, this is safe and you have both hands free and you don't have to be aware that it's falling down okay try to do things like this without having children around and it's a moment where you and your instrument just stay here so um, I have now here several um, of these microfiber cloths. I have them on my online shop and I made already a, a, a video about it, about this uh, um, microfiber cloth and believe me I won't become rich by selling microfiber cloths but microfiber is not microfiber and when I made the video I have a nice intro where I explained that my mother showed me about the microfiber and I thought what's up with my mother, you know. But the reason that she liked it that much is because it was a miracle. But at the time when I was uh, in, uh, at home and she talked me in the kitchen about cleaning the kitchen, I was not very much interested. Now that I'm in instrument making, actually, I realized that microfiber is not microfiber. And this is the same company than the ones who make the, 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 the rags which they give to the lenses of Zeiss, which are famous, famous lenses, uh, optical lenses in, made in Germany, or even uh, Porsche um, um, sunglasses or glasses. Uh, they have this small uh, microfiber cloth, and it's the same company in Korea where they make this microfiber. And if you buy a very cheap microfiber from uh, Amazon or you compare it with one like this, you will probably immediately see the difference, okay? Once it is dirty, you can put it into, throw it into the washing machine and then you can clean again. Now, if you just play and you just want to take off this um, rosin, then I would say you do it like this, okay? You just go in between, you go underneath the string, you go underneath this, the, the tailpiece and you just pass by and the microfiber will catch up everything which is 
underneath and is so you can see here maybe a little bit of I don't know if you can see this I don't know because I can see it so nicely here it is dusty and on the other side I took it away but I don't know if you can see it not too well I'm sorry because I can see it so nicely and the difference is so extreme so I just take off now the dust of the rosin okay then after that I also take off the dust of the fingerboard okay let me go all the way here like this like this on the strings I also take it first off like this it's important that there is rosin on the string but as soon as the 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 rosin gets old it's creating weight and is collecting um, dirt and that's why I would also clean the strings here with a, a solvent which I also have here prepared and then we will also clean the strings now first we do here now the whole instrument and I like to do it very precisely and also the upper part of the tailpiece I go here I like to clean it also underneath the fingerboard. I clean it quite nice. Then I pass by the ribs, take away. It's a good time to see if it has been um, here, if it's something open, especially on this side here. It is very easy that it's opening because of the hand which is sweating and leaves a lot of, of oily and greasy material. So you can you can see if it's making a noise or if it's good sounding. I pass all the ribs in the corners, everything very nice. Try like this, okay? And uh, usually this would be a, a just a, a quick cleaning and you can double check if everything is nice, okay? The neck now, like this, in times like coronavirus, you understand why borrowing the instrument and giving it, flipping from farm musician to, to another one is not really good because you certainly, it's a very individual used item. So it would be like passing over the mask, you know, and we don't do that. So we clean it all here very nice, okay. And then we have it very nice. Sometimes I also, when I see that the bridge has something on, I also clean the, the bridge, which gets a lot of, uh, without putting too much pressure, because you certainly don't want to move the bridge, okay? So at the time you're moving the bridge, I usually also quick give a double check on the bridge if it's standing well, and this is very well. It's 90 degrees here and in the front a little bit like this dividing this angle exactly in two equal parts, which is exactly what I think is very important, okay? Double check that underneath here nothing is touching the top. It's all fine, all set, no cracks. Maybe some cracks here are coming up on an older instrument or somebody you don't know did squeeze here. You know, a small child or something, everything is okay. It's always good to look very close to your instrument, okay? In case you have to move your bridge, it's a good time to put it on your lap, take two hands and then just the upper part, you adjust it a little bit, looking at it like this, okay? And you want to see it straight, 90 degrees to the center line, everything lined up perfectly, okay? If it's still something a little bit like this, you still just can move it a little bit. If you had to move a lot, the trick of lifting the, a, a string with two fingers underneath and lifting up the string and then back again to on the bridge is also very good. Your strings will be very grateful that you treat them this well. Double check again, all fine. Okay, underneath the scroll I didn't 
clean here. And I love to have everything nicely clean. If you want to clean a little bit in the inside here, then usually I take a small brush. Just need to take a brush. Hold on. I have to grab a, a brush here and I'll show you how I do that. good sorry it's a little bit here inclined like this okay ah, I, oops I forgot to use my ear pods so then the audio immediately comes much better right especially go away hope you can hear this minute now better like this okay so here we go like this spec so in case you want to clean your your instrument a little bit better then i take a brush and then i go inside with the brush and i take away underneath the dust same thing if the tailpiece here is dusty then i go with the brush and i take dust away like this even the small holes here inside i take it with a brush and underneath the the saddle uh, underneath the tailpiece the saddle you see it especially on the cello you see it a lot when you play mm -hmm. and then you see this dust and you don't know how to get it away it's a small brush very easy okay um is a little bit things which i saw also on uh, on uh, car detailing when you see these videos they do they don't they're not anymore car washing but they're car detailing and then you see people washing and cleaning a car and you wouldn't expect what this kind of world of maniacs regarding how to clean your car how extremely nice but you can even learn some details about this and this with the brush is something i i saw there once you have it clean you have nothing which could scratch the varnish and this is the reason why i take the dust off at first okay now the microfiber cloth at that point for me would be ready to to be thrown into the washing machine don't keep it for years without washing in the washing machine okay there's just one more thing which i want to show you what i'm going to do with this um, microfiber cloth uh, have it even uh, yellow and nice and I will use this one to show you what I'm going actually to do with this one and then I put it into the washing machine but I want to take a light color one in order that I can show you what, what how much dirt you can still get out of your instrument okay now one thing when it comes to the instrument to get it nicely um, clean and shiny and well treated it's an item which is made out of wood a very delicate varnish on top of it and this varnish as a precious furniture needs to be a little bit let's call it nutrit and so in order when it is not anymore now it doesn't mean that everything which is shiny that it is perfect okay this is first thing but at a certain stage you see that the varnish is screaming to get something in order that it's not so hard and 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 uh, dried okay and so there is a i i call it edgar's gentle instrument uh cleaner which is how you can see already lots of oil and lots of wax okay so this would be what i suggest people to use on an instrument especially musicians before i apply this and i show you how i apply it now i use it i just want to show you a different option which is rather for violin makers and i have here on the top i have an a because i use it in the workshop nothing is written on it's alcohol okay because alcohol you you use to solve 
shellac, goma laca in italiano, okay, goma laca, so it's just shellac with alcohol, and I put GL on the top of the tab because I don't want to change the tabs, and this one is just furniture oil, um, all your pagliarino, Italian, you can get it here even in the supermarket, you use it to put it on your, on your furniture at home, you put it on uh, on uh, on the wooden parts in your garden before you actually put a layer of protection uh, varnish. So you have these three things. And with these three things, shellac, alcohol, and oleo, you can also polish your instrument. Now, the thing is, if you, if you, every time you use this, it's like a very thin layer of varnish. And old instrument, antique instruments, when they are talking about how fancy the instrument, the, the, the varnish of the old makers, of the great makers are, most of the time, too often has been polished with this kind of shellac, alcohol, and oil. Now, we use it in Cremona because we make new instruments. So when once we have finished making the instrument, we sandpaper the surface with this very fine sandpaper, like 1,500 uh, and then we make maybe another thin layer, and then we use a, a like micro mesh, a 2,800, 3,000 something. We paper, sandpaper it, and then we polish it with this one, and that's it. Okay, so it's like a last layer. But you cannot now every time you want to clean or to to polish your instrument use shellac and alcohol. How many makers do is no good because if you are restoring instrument and you are getting to do with older instruments you will see that most of these instruments have too much shellac on it only because they have been polished like crazy sometimes ugly cracks are are hidden because of a lot of polish and it's no good to keep an instrument uh, together only with polish okay and the reason you can use now a polish on an instrument, if you have now a scratch on your varnish, you have to fill that up somehow. You can certainly take a little bit and with a small brush, a little bit of shellac in that, sandpaper, a little bit more paper and everything like this. It's just, you only have to get away a scratch, you can or sandpaper the whole surface down until this scratch is not anymore there. And this is like in the car industry, you very often see that people are, are actually going with machinery down with the whole varnish in order to get a very nice surface. On violins, it's the same, yeah? You can, or sandpaper with very fine sandpaper taking off, or the old shellac polish, or the original varnish, which would be like a disaster on old instruments, okay? The best thing is actually with a humid rag and a little bit of soap and water, and then just insist for days and days to get, get off these all thin layers of, of shellac, okay? I just want to explain to you, so as a musician, never polish, and as a violin maker, once the instrument is completed, stay a little bit away from shellac and alcohol and oil. The oil is not the problem. The, sh the alcohol, you need to, to make it a little bit more liquid and to keep it soft, the rag. But the, the shellac is just building up and you don't want to varnish and build up varnish. Okay, so use it okay if there's a, a, a serious reason. Otherwise, use a polish just like a musician and that should do. Okay? Now, I open this bottle here, should have opened it later because you have to shake it a little bit, but I put my finger on top of it, I like this, like this, okay? This is a very nice um, preparation, which I got to know from a musician in Austria, and uh, I started to use it in the beginning, I thought he's a maniac, but then uh, after years, I came back to this nice, um, situation or this nice uh, uh, option and I just want to show you maybe I have to go a little bit closer let's see if we can 
show it to you. This one is very shiny. I don't know if you can see it, if this works. Mm -hmm. And you just, with small circles, you put it on. It certainly has also a very nice smell. And uh, you can just put it on like this. And it is not the quantity of this polish which makes the difference. Now I make here one part of it. The upper part and the lower I don't. And then maybe I can show you the difference. I don't know if you can see this. I made the upper part I polished and the lower part I did not polish. And I don't know if you can see it, this difference. It is nicely on this whole thing. It is certain slightly, let's say, well, not, not really greasy actually. It takes a little bit time because it's kind of a wax, uh, wax which has to stay there. And you don't build up anything. And it is a nice product which is cleaning. and protecting your varnish, okay? So now you see how much of a, with one drop, how much I could actually use this, this um, polish. And uh, I really, I like it very much because I know it is very gentle. And you can also put it on the top, all right? So you have just to know that it is putting some precious soft material into the small gaps of the varnish, but it is not building up. It helps to clean a little bit the instrument. And uh, this is it all about. And while you are cleaning, the nice thing is that you are here now with your loved instrument and you can take your time. And because it is so nicely shiny, you can look at it very well. And maybe you see if there is something not correct. If you want to go with this one also underneath the fingerboard, it's also fine. Watch out not to give bumps to the bridge or go into areas where you don't reach the violin is useless and it's getting very very nice okay i do here a little bit more so than at least one part i have finished here yeah and then maybe one part i just leave in order that you can see the difference and then I will go a little bit closer with the camera yeah in the middle here where usually the rosin is going down on the surface you can insist a little bit more if you really see that it's really a lot of rosin build up you can slightly um, put your rag under the water and make it slightly wet and then with some soap and you just gently small areas don't wash your violins or that humidity would even go into the f holes or something you don't want that certainly but you can with small circles soapy water very soap more soap than water actually and then you just clean like this and you just insist a little bit, don't soak the bridge or things like this, and then you can slowly take away this, okay? If you wait and you just clean every five years, probably as a musician with this system, you will not be able to proceed. And so then I would say it's better you don't do it and you go to a maker. But if you just clean every day a little bit, it's getting better and better, okay? So this is now how I would 
clean the instrument, okay? And I think it is very nice. The ribs, I still have to do a little bit more. I didn't even touch them in the area here. This one and this one, I think I cleaned a little bit. Or no, it was the other side. This one and this one I cleaned. This one I did not clean yet. Like this, here in the lower area, I didn't clean until here. And here in this area, I cleaned it, yeah? So I don't want to waste your time here and to make things too long, but this is actually the way how I would take care of the instrument and I look very careful, okay? Um, but before putting the instrument, then I always like to have a rag like this. This is something which my mother made for me, okay? And uh, this is how I have it here. So this is my gentle instrument cleaner on wax base and with lots of oil in order that the varnish gets something in. Before I throw my microfiber um, cloth into the washing machine, I do my last, very last thing. And this is cleaning the strings in this area here. And so I made a, a string cleaner, okay? Um, right now it's, it's more easy to to uh, to uh, ship it only in Europe, but as soon as I can make finally this exam, which I actually before the shutdown, I wanted to do that, um, then I can uh, ship it worldwide. Right now I'm not uh, supposed to do that. Now I take this yellow one, okay? And we just here, um, put a little bit of this one here on the rag and then we just clean here the springs and you try to make it all around right one side and the other one and the microfiber is super good in taking off. Now I'd only make the G-string because I don't want to be annoying here. But just to show you how much is going off here just by one string, okay? This is only one string. So you can imagine this is some weight. It is uh, old uh, resin, rosin here among the wiring of the string is all around. And you immediately see also that the string is more clean compared to the other strings. This one I cleaned, this two I didn't clean yet. And also the E string you can certainly clean. And, um, and when you play it, you will see that the bow immediately touches immediately because it's completely grease free and it's immediately responding to what you're doing with the bow. And it even sounds more open this is not my impression because I'm not a musician, but you will see and you will be surprised. Um, once I did all this, I put the microfiber immediately into the washing machine, okay? Uh, you can wash it as often as you want and it's always working great. It's the texture itself of the microfiber cloth, uh, which is so miracle and uh, This is the best thing I can recommend you, okay? Um, I can certainly show you also how I polish at least for instance an instrument here. It's an instrument of one of my um, students. The backside I think is very nicely shiny, how you can see and it's nicely finished because it's easy to finish. The top is quite opaque or matte finish. I don't know if you can see that like this. It's not very much shiny and uh, it is uh, still should need a little bit of finish of the shellac and I just want to show you how I do this with the shellac here, okay? And that's why I, I even took a few um, pieces of a shirt here, usually my shirt, if I don't wear this one here, 
I then uh, get some shellac or things on, on my shirt and then they end up being rags in the workshop, okay? So now this one was a nice shirt. I loved it very much when I see it. And while I was preparing it for this transmission, I saw that the, the fabric itself is very thin and very fine and it doesn't feel to be completely cotton, okay? So if it is like this, it doesn't really work very well to polish. So here I have another one, which is a little bit, I don't know if you can see this, but this is quite a, a nice cotton, okay? A little bit uh, more rough cotton, not really like a jean, but a little bit more rougher one. And this one is definitely working better than this very fine one, okay? So that's why I want to use this one here. Hmm? There's even a small piece here, strange. I want to scratch like this, but it doesn't work. Okay, we do like this. So first thing is that I take away all these things and then I fold it. You don't want to have dirt on it, okay? So I fold it. Nicely. Oh. We do like this. I put this one here away. And maybe we do like this and hip. And then I put alcohol, shellac, and uh, oil. The other ones I put away and I just want to show you how this works and you will see that it's not this easy and it's not made for musicians to use. Here you can see around all this shellac which is building up on the neck of the bottle. It's shellac like this, yeah. And uh, so usually I just put a lot uh, something on the rag, especially when it's completely fresh, the rag, it has to Soak a little bit, yeah, maybe even a little bit of alcohol from the back side in order that it is nicely soaked with alcohol. Okay, I always like it. Some people don't like it. My father was one of those who never liked alcohol. And then I put a small drop of oil on it, okay, just one drop, this is already slightly too much, take away a little, okay? And then I do like this, okay? And then you can start polishing like this and you never have to stop and then you have to raise like this. Now with this procedure, you're actually filling up some tiny scratches with shellac and the, the, the oil prevents that the whole, piece of cotton I'm keeping in my hand doesn't stick on the varnish and uh, you apply here a thin layer of of shellac and this process to do it very well you have to do it more than once because in the beginning when you put it on the most reason that it is looking shiny is rather the 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 oil and not the shellac itself, okay? To get a, a, a quick and good and long lasting result, you should use as little oil as possible. And uh, you can spend easily days polishing very nice an instrument, okay? And it is rather dangerous. If something would drop down, it could destroy the varnish of the rest of the instrument, yeah? And the rag at the very end, you can throw away, but you have to polish and clean the whole instrument, yeah? I just wanted to show you how this goes. Maybe I can show you the difference of how it looks like. Um, one part here, the one you're looking at in front has been polished. And the, the bark in the back side was not 
being mm, polished. I don't know if you can see it. Here it is very shiny here in the front and here in the back side it is not shiny. I hope you can see this. I can see it very nicely, but I hope you can see it. Yeah. In the front it is very shiny and the back side not. Yeah. This is created by Shellac. Yeah. So this was this. Now I have to double check the the answers, question and answers. I have to take off here the cell phone from the whole take here, touching with the cell phone the making here, and then I have to make a quick change of the of how I keep the the camera here. And then we are doing this here quick like this. Okay, so now you're going to be on here. Oh, hop. very good. So let me see how I can do this here. Okay. And I'm here like this. Yeah. Kumalaka and alcohol. Let me put all these things away. And then I want to answer your questions. So let me see your questions. Wow, Arian Conci, buongiorno maestro Edgar, ho sentito ieri in YouTube uno dei suoi strumenti 2017 e mi è piaciuto molto il suono, molto bello e chiaro, un lavoro molto professionale, i miei complimenti sinceri. Oh, so Arian Conci saw an instrument of mine and heard it from 2017 in a very nice, clear and professional work and nice, clear sound and uh, it's very happy about it. I'm very happy about this. Um, Alexander Winkler, hello Edgar. Hello Alexander. I have a very beautiful master violin from 1733. 1733. The top plate is really dark, but the back ribs and scroll have a nice orange color. Could this be dirt? What would f fix it? Mm, don't fix any color, okay? And very likely uh, it might be a German instrument. And uh, the Germans used a different varnish on the top and a different varnish on the on ribs and uh, and uh, back. And so on the top they used the varnish which is more with uh, uh, rosin. And this rosin colophonium uh, was oxidating stronger than the rest of the varnish. And that's why the top is very dark and the rest is quite orange clear. Okay. So I wouldn't uh, try to fix anything. You, you would just destroy you the value of the instrument. So just leave it. Uh, also, I see the original varnish under when it, I put it in the sun. Yeah, but just, uh, just leave it. Don't, don't, uh, I don't think. No, I have not seen it. You have to send me pictures and then I can tell you if it is, uh, has been re-varnished. I would hope that it was not re-varnished, okay? It's not like with uh, cars and even with cars, if you do re-varnish it, it's not any more original, huh? Antonio Marcos, Sodo Brasil. Very buenos dias. Um, Larry Counts, happy to see you back in the shop. Me too. I'm very happy to be here and I hope you enjoy it to see me here. John Haye, wonderful varnish. What type of violin is that? Guarnieri del Gesù. This Guarnieri del Gesù is from 1997, made by Edgar Russ here in Cremona. Okay, and uh, it's a violin of mine. Um, Jay Blair, no, here, Martin uh, Slachta. Hi, Edgar. Hi, Mar Martin. Jay Blair, good day, Edgar from Canada. Hello to Canada. Alexander Winkler, as for the Dirty Master Violin, I talked about could there be too much shellac? Could be, but 
need to see and try to make some pictures, send me the pictures by mail and I will immediately check it out, okay? Um, Jay Blair, did Stradivarius use amber in his varnish? This is now the one billion question here. We don't know exactly. Uh, I, I use amber varnish and I'm convinced that it's a very good varnish, but very likely, very likely, at the time of Stradivari, they used a lot of simply rosin varnish, which means colophonium, the one you put on the bow, the same thing, the same rosin, they just heated up or linseed oil and that was the varnish. Very likely, and I say this because this kind of varnish has been, uh, is from the chemical uh, point of view, once you have amber and you put it on the fire and you get it back from the stone uh, properties to a resin again that's what happening what's happening when you put it on the fire and it's making a lot of uh, green dust um, uh, um, smoke and this is reducing its volume and then it is again um, um, soluble or, or you can um, solve it in, in the rest of the varnish in the linseed oil from the chemical point of view it's completely the same than to a rosin and at the time of Stradivari, this rosin varnish was actually the mostly used varnish to put a varnish, a transparent varnish on wood, wooden items. Uh, they used it for doors, for windows, for everything, okay? So it's very likely that it was this, but I don't exclude that it might have been also amber, yeah. Um, so I don't want to say it was amber. It wouldn't be very professional from my side, okay? JPX, can you advise what product you use for strings? Um, uh, what does that mean? I, you have to tell me again what kind of strings I'm using or, or what, what's, what product I'm using to clean my strings. I have my own uh, string cleaner, which I'm here. It's, it's, it's a, a mixture of solvents which I just, uh, I think, which works very good. It's not only one, it's a mixture of solvents to clean the rosin as quick as possible from the strings. Yeah. Um, Ludwig van Beethoven. Ho, 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 I didn't even think that I'm going to meet Ludwig van Beethoven. Um, can the violin only become as shiny as the varnish? I accidentally made a violin varnish super dull after rubbing it with a sponge for a long time. Could you put polish on anything and make it shiny? Well, this is just the point that you, you were probably having a, a quite a aggressive polish, not uh, something like mine, which is, I just call it also gentle because it is a very, um, how should I say, wax-based uh, uh, product. And so this doesn't remove or move up the, the last uh, surface. So it doesn't uh, make any problems like this. And this is the problem. In case you have a very aggressive polish, you cannot rub in one area. You have to stay very well, just like I, I was polishing before with shellac and, and, and the alcohol. And even with shellac and alcohol, I could make a big damage to the instrument and to the varnish itself. So once you have that situation that it is not shiny anymore, in that area, you have to build up again varnish. So that means you need to go to a violin maker or you have to be professional to put on in that area some shellac a little bit, one thin layer after another to build up again varnish and then you can polish that varnish without taking it away. So it's not this easy. So where if you took off the varnish, you cannot with a gentle uh, polish like this now, imagine that it will be a miracle that it is creating your nice shiny varnish again. Yeah, what is gone is gone, and especially if it is a teak instrument, it's really a pain. Baymax Unknown Avenger, what a fancy name! That's a nice violin. I wish I can afford one because I recently broke my old one. I wish so too, and I would love to see you playing one or on on one of my instruments. 
<laughs> Basim, hello Edgar. What about orange oil and lemon oil for cleaning the violin? Sounds like a, a strange question for the ones who don't know that this exists, this kind of orange or, or lemon oil. Uh, it's certainly very nicely smelling. Uh, I just would just stay away from this kind of oil because it's extremely aggressive. And I know we eat oranges and lemons and they're all fine, but these are very aggressive and they can really damage your varnish. It's, it's kind of like turpentine or something like this. Yeah. It's not really oil. It's, it's oily. Uh, product, but it's it's not for for cleaning, uh, for non-professional. If you are now a professional maker and you just, or if you want to use it, don't use it on your instrument from 1700 or made from Edgar. Okay, and in in case, just a small drop and start cleaning a little bit and then leave it. Okay, in order that it can dry out again, because you're you're risking to to make things softer and softer and taking it away and then you clean so much that there is no varnish anymore okay john haya took away the message jf anderson leadership hello can you use alcohol to take off the shellac yes of course but you will take off also the rest of the varnish don't use it okay don't use it uh it's too dangerous too dangerous okay you can uh um, and can you look at some photos of my violent evaluate? Of course, send me the email and I will let you know what I think about it. Okay. Terry Vaughn. Hi, is this process good for both oil and spirit finishes? Yes, for both kind of varnishes. Especially for both kind of varnishes because oil varnish, after 12 years, the process of polymerization has completely finished and it is completely soluble in alcohol and you will not be able to tell the difference uh, if it is now oil or a spirit varnish after 12 years. That's the, the, the length of the process of the polymerization of the oil varnish. And then after that, it's uh, organic chemistry and it's so difficult to know what it is. And that's why it's so difficult to know what the old masters used. Sunraysia one with the rosa and ash damage that would of the violin if not doing the cleaning after practicing no it wouldn't damage it just is getting really ugly it's it's uh with the time the more you leave it on the more it's oxidating the rosin is oxidating a lot and after many years of, of rosin in this area it becomes black it becomes really black and it is a little bit sticky uh, resin which attracts also a little bit this um, dust all around and then it is um, making it not really very appealing, okay? So that's why I would rather say um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend to use it, okay? Uh, I would probably mm, stay away from um, two tough things and... and uh, for you as a musician, then you don't get it away anymore, this this uh, this black oxidated uh, rosin. So every time you play, I would try to get the white dust slightly quick away. And uh, once in a while, how I showed, I would take care to polish the instrument as good as possible. Yeah. Now, now I wanted to show you here from closer a little bit how this here is this is now this microfiber cloths which are still packed and this here is the one i used okay and uh i like it actually very much these ones you find on my online store here and this is the the, the cleaner okay with this one i cleaned this instrument and i wanted to show you here how this turns out so here now, I think you can see it very nicely how this works, okay? Here you can also see very nice the string cleaned with the string uh, cleaner and here not cleaned with the string cleaner. So you can really see very nicely the difference, okay? 
So this is one thing and you can see the top. I cleaned the whole entire top with this product. And if I put it on the ribs, I think here I didn't clean it, right? The instrument with this cleaner. On the instrument like this, I did the upper part and then you can see here a line. Here it is this line and you see the part which I put it this cleaning this um, gentle cleaner and then you see this line from here usually on the car detailing uh, videos they put this blue, blue stripe I'm sorry I'm not a car dealer or a car cleaning guy but you can definitely see very clean here and here it is not so shiny as it is here right so here you have the whole instrument here it has not been cleaned and then up and then you see it has been cleaned I hope you can see this. I see it so clear and I hope you can also see it that nice. That's what I wanted to show you. And here, for instance, on the ribs, here I want to show you, I cleaned here the C and I didn't clean this area. I did not lean. I don't know if you can see it. It's not so clear to see, but you can see the difference. This one has not been cleaned and this one I wrapped a little bit of this cleanser, okay? So this is just on my violin from 1997, um, right? I don't know if you can see that, okay? And then another thing I wanted to show you is that the violin, which is actually very okay on the back. I didn't touch here anything, even on the ribs I didn't touch. And on the top, I cleaned here. This side, I didn't do anything. Okay, so you see it still needs some finishing work. And on the other side, I started to polish the shellac. So you can see that it's nicely shiny. And you can even see that, that from the central line, more or less, I didn't touch. And so one side has been polished and the other side did not have been polished or has not been polished, yeah? So here you see very nicely the difference, the gap between one and them. Yeah, just wanted to show you this. Um, and this is actually the whole thing I wanted to tell you. And then last thing here, I wanted to, sh to tell you about my very last um, changes here. You know that during the lockdown, I I made these question and answer videos quite on a very regular basis on Monday and on Thursday. Thursday, more specific for musicians on Monday for everybody and there were automatically um, more violin makers. And now I started to put on patreon.com. I've created a page where you can sign up and you can show me um, a little bit your how grateful you are for what I'm delivering you. And the last days and also during the lockdown, I was working every day, writing, writing, writing like crazy. And so for the cheapest uh, version on three euros per month, you can have the access code to be part of this question and answer transmissions, which will be transmitted every month. Mm, for a little bit more, for nine euros, you get already every month uh, my measurements with details and uh, things like this. And this is coming on a regular basis, and you will slowly get more and more material. And I really worked a lot and to create a very nice thing. And the last three days, I was actually writing for the 25 euro project that every month you get uh, something about the varnish written. Uh, with the recipe which is free and I will still continue making free videos but it's just an additional thing for those who are showing me how much they appreciate and they don't want to buy a violin which I can understand I just created this and I would have pleasure to see that also there some people are happy to maybe be part of this uh, nice community which I'm here creating and I hope uh, lots of you enjoy and have a lot of new information to be applied in their daily life, saving money and having more fun in what they're doing. Okay, 
So today I'm really good. I have to see if there's another last question or something. No, I think I was good. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, check out the Patreon. I will put it now on all my social media and things like this. And uh, this is it from Cremona from today. All the best. Sign up. Tell your friends. See you soon again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.